Hey everyone, so I've had a lot of requests lately about makeup brushes and I'm surprised to know that even some of my friends don't even know what a concealer brush is or an eyeliner brush. So here in this video, I'm going to be talking about the essential brushes that you should have in your kit, whether it be a personal kit or a makeup kit. And these are just brushes or types of brushes that you should get and also my suggestions in terms of the brands and what you should buy and everything like that. I'm gonna first start with our face brushes. So here I have my face brushes and I have my eye brushes and of course a lip brush. And I'm going to go through each one of them and tell you what kind of things they do on your face, why you need them in your personal makeup kit and why they're so important. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is a foundation brush. And this is a foundation brush. This is the Sigma F80 and it's my favorite foundation brush. And it's basically a flat top kabuki. Now there are so many foundation brushes out there. There's a paddle brush or even sponges, for example, types of foundation brushes. But I feel like if you're just starting out with makeup, the best brush is actually a flat top kabuki like this one, which is the Sigma F80. And I love this because it, you get a flawless finish every single time without even trying. Sometimes the paddle brush can apply too much of the foundation. And how you apply it is you just take some foundation, whether if it's a liquid foundation, you just put it at the back of your hand just like that. You take some of this stuff and then you just buff it into your face and you get just the most amazing flawless finish. And foundation, of course, is very important to cover redness and to perform the base for your makeup. Now, I don't always use a concealer brush, but if you're the person who you like to use the brushes, then concealer brush is kind of important. I would use the concealer brush, for example, applying a liquid foundation that is very thick. I would just stroke it onto my face. I do this with a lot of models when I do the makeup as well. And then I get a sponge just like this. It's dirty. I'm going to go wash it soon. And I'm just going to just basically buff out the foundation so it's not that thick of a coverage. Other than that, you can always use it for concealer, which is originally what it's for. And it's great because it's a synthetic, which is important because you are working with cream and liquid products. You can't really use powder with synthetic brushes, it just doesn't pick up the pigment unless you're looking at a mineral foundation or something that is a pressed powder. Angled brush. And I use this for contouring. Now I also use the other MAC one, which is a small fluffy brush, and that was my first MAC brush. But I am into now these kind of angled brushes. They're relatively thin as well, and these are absolutely amazing for contouring. For contouring, you need something that fits into the crevices of your cheek, kind of like in this area. And it's really important to just add that contour so you just slim down the entire face. Now you would use this brush with a bronzer, a matte bronzer preferably, and you would just stroke in to your face, the contour, and also the bronzer. And of course you can see a very slimified sort of look. Now blush brushes come in different sizes. I like the small one. This is the MAC, I believe 116, and the lettering kind of came off. But I absolutely love this because it's small and it's a paddle brush and it's slightly fluffy which means that it can buff out the blush really nicely so you don't have any harsh lines. You don't want something too fluffy and dispersed because that's going to basically spread the blush everywhere and not specifically on your cheeks and the pigmentation is just going to be all over the place. So I like something small and fluffy just like this to apply my blush and what I do is I just pat the blush onto my cheeks and you can see that already. So I really like this. A blush brush is very important in your personal makeup kit. Some people say you have a powder brush, you don't need a blush brush. Well, the thing is when you apply makeup in the morning, you're going to apply the powder and then you're going to apply the blush. And you don't want to mix the two because what if you mix the two and you just need to touch up with the powder and you use your blush brush to touch up and you're going to see that your whole face turns red. So it's that sort of thing. Now, this is a really important brush to have as well, but it's sort of a luxury thing. I wouldn't say you really need to need it, but I really like it because when I put concealer on my face and I want to use the powder, say a translucent powder, I'm not going to actually opt for something really big and fluffy, just because the bristles can get caught up in the concealer and take away my concealer. But with this one, which is a stippling brush, this is also called a skunk brush and it's a dual fiber brush. Basically, there are white hairs and there are black hairs and you're supposed to move the white hairs independently of the black hairs. And when you apply the powder onto your face, 
the bristles are so light that it just slightly covers over the concealer so you're not rubbing it off. So I really think this, the skunk brush or the duo fiber brush is really important for that. There are so many uses for this as well. You can use it for foundation, liquid foundation by stippling it on. That's why it's called a stippling brush. And you can slowly move it in circular motions and it will create a very nice sheer and flawless finish. You can also use it for bronzer and blush because it's going to make it really smooth and it's going to have a really nice sort of sheer coverage which is great. Very natural looking as well. So that's all the face brushes that I think everyone should have. This is just very basic brushes to have. I would suggest, of course, a foundation brush. Not a paddle, but something like a flat top kabuki because it's so easy to use. And then I would suggest the concealer brush because it can do a multitude of things. You can even apply eye primer with it. It's just a small paddle foundation brush, as you can see. And applying concealer is really easy with that. And then you would use a blush brush, of course, so you don't mix the two. A contouring brush, which I think is critical because I use contouring every single day. And of course, a skunk brush or a duo fiber brush. Just because you want to apply the powder onto your face, you don't want to rub off your concealer. So those are just sort of five basic brushes for face. A lot of people say you need this brush, you need this brush, you need a paddle brush, you need a short shader brush. I think that it is pretty cool to have them and I do have them simply because I do makeup professionally. So I do have them. But if you're just starting out with makeup, buying all those brushes can be pretty expensive, I understand. So I have picked five essential kinds of brushes that you should have in your kit and it can do a lot of looks for you and go really far for your money. So I'm going to start with, of course, this brush, and this is the MAC 217. It is my favorite MAC brush and an essential brush if you're looking to get a MAC brush. If anything, this will really be a unique brush that I don't think any other brand really has, unless you're talking Sigma because they kind of copy the MAC brushes or the type of MAC brushes, but I love the MAC 217 because it packs on color. If you see it, it is a rounded fluffy tip, as you can see, and it packs on color really, really well. And while it packs on color, because it's fluffy, you can really blend it out, and it's just a really nice flawless finish. You can also use the tip to add a bit of warmth into your crease as well. So it's also a very versatile eyeshadow brush. And a lot of people say, oh, you need a paddle brush, uh, a very thin, I, I have a paddle brush over there, but I didn't bring it. It's a paddle brush and it just applies the color. But why not have something that's dual purpose and that you don't have to spend so much money on? So I, I do agree that the MAC 217 is pricey, but for the, for the things that you're getting out of it, it's very worth it and it lasts a long time. A blending brush. And a blending brush is critical to your eye makeup because it makes that gradient effect that you need and it just blends everything out. You need a blending brush. And a blending brush is sort of a very fluffy domed brush as you can see. And this is essential eye makeup brush. And you just blend your crease out basically. And you can also add a bit of warmth and also blend it in depending on your eye shape. This is the MAC 224. I don't really recommend you get go out and get the MAC 224 because there are a lot of substitutes for the blending brush. Not unlike this one where there aren't very much substitutes for this shape and fluffiness of the brush. But the MAC 224, there are so many other brands out there and a lot cheaper brands that you can get and you don't have to get the MAC one because it's not that much more special. But I have the MAC one because I, ha I know, as you guys know, I had a period of time where I was really crazy about MAC. So next one that you need is a pencil brush. Pencil brushes are really important to your eye makeup because they apply the color specifically where you need them. Especially if you have small eyes like me, I like a concentrating color in the outer corner. As you can see, I always do the same thing. And that's because it really opens my eyes and makes my eyes a lot bigger. So having a pencil brush is really, really, really important. What you can do is just get like even darker colors really important. You can just add that into the places where you need to without having, you know, this, which is which really doesn't apply the makeup specifically. You can also use it on your waterline as well just to smoke it out. There's so many things you can do with this. You can blend out the cold pencil, a lot of things. So a pencil brush is really, really important. This was actually my first pencil brush, and it's called a pencil brush because it comes to a point and it's pretty rounded. I have MAC versions of it, but I feel like the MAC version's a bit too small in terms of the head. 
It's a bit too sharp, but this one's really nice and round. I don't remember the name of this. This was a generic makeup kit I got from like a blog shop when I first started out makeup. So <laughs> it happened to be the best brush out of the whole set and there were 46 brushes in there. I think I had a video on that. The last eye brush that you should have is an eyebrow brush. And this is called an angled brush, an angled synthetic brush. And a lot of people actually use this kind of brush for eyeliner. And I don't specifically like using it for eyeliner because I use liquid liner now. And with liquid liner, it already comes with a brush. I don't really need a sort of eyeliner brush. I used to use gel, and I do have eyeliner brushes with me. But I find that it's just so much more easier to use the brush that they gave you in the pot. So I'm just going to use that. But you can use this for eyebrows, and this is the Eco Tools one, and it's my ultimate favorite one. I love this so much. I use this every single day for my eyebrows, and it's just the perfect width. It's quite long, as you can see, and it just applies my brow powder instantly and beautifully. And I think that the brow powder, or even using dark eyeshadow between the matte black and matte dark brown, you can sort of mix the two colors to find your desired eyebrow color. And using that shadow or powder is so much more natural than using pencil and wax because you can't blend those things out when you apply them on your brow. But if you like those sharp, really skinny brows, then those are for you. But for me, I like the more natural looking brows, so I love using powder with this. And this is just an amazing brush to have. And of course, the last one I would say is a lip brush. And a lot of people say, oh, I'm just going to use lipstick out of, you know, the tube. That's fine. I think I've used lipstick out of the tube for a really long time before I started using the lip brush simply because I just, I don't know, I just, I didn't know too much about using lip brushes and thus until I went to makeup school. And when you go to makeup school, you find that, you know, you use a lot of brushes and I found out that I think lip brushes are essential if you want to do bold lip colors like really bright red or really bright orange or really bright pink because it really does get that line that you need that you can't use out of the tube when you apply it. You always find yourself having to clean up after. But with the lip brush, you just take some of the lipstick on your lip brush and then you can just draw it nicely. Even better, use a lip liner under the lipstick and you can get a really nice finish. So I think the lip brush is an essential brush to your makeup kit. So there we have it. Just a starter kit for all the people out there who don't know what brushes to get, who are really confused about what each brush does, who is just starting out makeup with like one brush and just like needs to get more and all of that. I understand fully I was there and now that I just know so much more about makeup and brushes, here is my sort of little guide to getting brushes. And so yeah, you need just five face brushes and five sort of eye and lip brushes. So 10 brushes in total, I think these are the essential brushes to have. Even though a lot of you who are starting out are like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of brushes, but each one serves a specific use on your face and you get just the best sort of finish ever. So I really hope you like this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.